Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Brandy Brooks. I'm the Director of Community Programs at The Food Project here in Boston. And uh, it's a 20-year-old nonprofit that does sustainable agriculture, youth leadership development, and community food access and food justice education. My background, however, is in architecture and planning and community design. So within the last year that I've been at The Food Project, I get asked and much more than I thought I would, how exactly did you end up at this organization? Um, and while it makes perfect sense to me in my head, I, I've found that I need to develop a way of telling people the story of how I came to work in food systems. And for me, there are three strands to it, uh, faith, work, and health. And so I'm gonna talk about those three things. The first really comes from faith and my faith background and beginning to work with an organization uh, here in Boston of Christians who were looking at how um, basically the, the biblical call to pursue justice in the world connected with modern life and what did that mean um, for modern Christians and how did you actually live that out? Um, and one of the big things we started to look at actually was, uh, particularly in the United States, was American consumerism um, and how that played into justice issues globally and also domestically. And one of the areas that we started looking at was food and actually looking at the farm bill and looking at the very interesting way that US food policy affects everything that goes on around the world. Um, and really the way that, that US food policy and American consumerism was destroying the livelihoods of small farmers and, and people in many, many nations across the country, as well as small farmers in the United States. And so we began thinking as a group about, well, well, how do we, again, as Christians, looking to try and live out our faith, start addressing this huge question of global poverty, which seems like an enormous thing that you can't even begin to touch, through at least some small area that we can control around our consumerism, looking at a variety of things, again, including food. And so that got me to thinking, you know, how do I purchase justly? And what does that even mean? And, you know, is it organic? Is it local? Is it, you know, all of these different things and really trying to, to understand how I could play that out in the way that I shopped. And a little bit after that, um, I also began to come to food from this other pathway, which is actually through my professional work. For four years, I ran a nonprofit called the Community Design Resource Center of Boston that linked up design professionals with community organizations to do pro bono projects and education programs around architecture and planning and other forms of design. And uh, we did this youth community design summit. We're always looking for ways to talk to youth about how design could be used as a tool for community change. And a friend of mine had come up with this great idea about using urban gardening as a way to transform uh, the landscape of Roxbury and Dorchester, where there are hundreds of vacant lots as a result of a variety of land use and planning injustice that has gone on in Boston. And at first, for me, this was a really great idea just in terms of land use and in terms of community engagement. And I thought, okay, this is going to be really great. Um, and then as I started to think, well, gardening isn't just about pretty flowers and pretty things in the environment, but people are looking at producing food. It, it started to captivate me this idea that, that you could return the production of food to the urban landscape, the idea that all of a sudden you could use food to bring people together socially, to provide economic development opportunities, as well as to restore the environment. Um, it really started me on this path of realizing that food is a tremendously powerful lens into what goes on in our world, um, and that it resonates with people because everybody has to <laughs> interact with it in some way. We all have to eat. Um, and so that started me on this professional path of beginning to explore food and, and beginning kind of as an amateur enthusiast, to start getting other people to say, hey, you've got to come and look at what's going on in urban food systems and meet all of these people at the Food Project, at Revision House, at Haley House, who are inspiring me to think about urban food and urban food systems in this totally different way. And then the third piece of this for me was really around my personal health. Um, because like too many African-American families, I've got the whole list of chronic diseases um, between my parents and my, my grandparents. So you wanna talk about obesity, diabetes, hypertension, heart disease, high cholesterol. We've got it all, it swirls around and just decides who to land on. Um, and, and so really there's this sense sometimes as a young person in my family, it's not a question of am I going to get diabetes, it's a question of when I'm gonna get diabetes. Um, and that can really put you in a position of feeling like a victim to your body and to your family history. Um, and so as I was thinking about food in this professional sense, food in this justice sense, I started thinking about food in this personal sense. And what does this actually mean to me in terms of my health and my family's health? Um, I had my Michael Pollan revolution, as one does, um, <laughs> and, and you know, reading in defense of food and really looking at um, how 
do you return to actual food, not food-like product, as he says. I love that phrase. Um, and then again, what does that mean for me and for my family? Um, you know, th thinking about that, when, when diabetes lands on you, it landed on me about early 2011. Um, and there's a whole bunch of interesting emotional and psychological things that you go through in that point. But I think one of the exciting things for me was really being able to say, this is not something that I have to be a victim to. And that through the way that I interact with food, um, I can change this and I can help to change this for my family as well. And I think it's exciting to be able to, when I talk to people in the community, talk about my personal food story and how to um, that are much like many of the people that we work with in the communities where we work.